God is bound to say to you. Heavenly Father, in this second section, speak to us through your word. Let every life that we hear your word have an encounter with you. Vow to give you every glory. In Jesus' most wonderful name. Give me a big hand. You may be seated. Praise God. Never come to a meeting like this and just get excited. The first dose on discipline, do something about it. When you're excited and you're not affected, you end up being afflicted. That will not be your passion. You have come to a great Shiloh, but make sure you take great decisions with actions. Otherwise, the things you are hearing may not produce, but they will produce in your life. This morning, I've been given a topic, unveiling the dominion power of focus. I was blessed with the first session, and I'm sure this second session will bless you. We'll be taking from Joel chapter 2. When you get home, you read 1 to 11. For time's sake, we read 7 and 8. And then we take our bearing from there. Unveiling the dominion power of focus. In verse 7, it says, They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk everyone in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Shout hallelujah. He said, everyone will stand where he belongs. There is a place for each and every one of us. In the book of First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20 and verse 24, it said, let every man, if you look at that scripture, it didn't say let every man, it's a man, individualistic, abide in the same calling where he, not they, was called. There's no collective focus. Focus is individualistic. It said, let every man, so a wife cannot focus for the husband. If you are not focused, you live like a locust. Focus simply means to be totally committed or absorbed in a special assignment. Focus is also the ability to look unwaveringly at your purpose or assignment without distraction. Most of the things I will say are the things I've heard from my father. So if you hear anything repeated, take it like that. <laughs> There's no new message I'll preach here. The things I've heard, I'm just... To focus means to bring your attention to the center, to concentrate on one thing intently in order to gain clarity. Now hear this and hear me well. No one ever gets anything worthwhile by accident. Life is all about focus. Only the focus will enjoy dominion. And I see you enjoy dominion. Now hear this. There is a gold mine in every gold mine. There is a gold, G-O-L-D-M-I-N-E, in every G-O-A-L mind. When your mind has the goal, your focus, there's gold in it. Jesus, speaking in Matthew 22, verse, 6, verse 22, he said, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. 
The only reason people fail is because of broken focus. Lack of focus is very dangerous. Life can only be dynamic when it is specific. Staying on one's God-ordained path in life is the key to dominion. Now hear this and hear me well. Satan's main target is to break your focus off your assignment on earth. And God brought you here to exercise dominion. So the moment you go off, that's it. You will never go off anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now here it is, your enemy is anyone who breaks your focus from a God-given assignment. Your friend is anyone who helps you to focus on instructions of God for your life. We just heard from Pastor David, he said, the Bible is all about instructions. Every time you ask for a miracle, God will give you an instruction. When he said, I want dominion, I need for instructions. Jesus encouraged his disciples to keep focus on the kingdom of God. He said, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 3. He said all their provisions will come through absolute focus on him. The easiest way to destroy any man's goal or dream is to give him another goal or dream. That's distraction. The easiest way, for instance, to make a student fail in an exam is to make him major in doing business and leave studies. He will fail. Because it will fragment his focus, dilute his interest, and affect his energy. No matter how intelligent the student is, just give him, tell him to start doing business. If he wants to make first class, he will end up with third class. But hear this and hear me well. Broken focus is the reason why many are not going forward. I pray you will go forward after today. Yeah. God's word said it was busy here and there. For you to have an outstanding accomplishment, hear this and hear me well, you must be focused on that given assignment. One of the greatest things that happened to me, I went to Bible school here, I went to church here, many of you don't know, I went to church in Winner's Chapel, went to Bible school in Winner's Chapel, got married in Winner's Chapel. Amen. And one of the first things I ever heard from my mentor, when we were in Bible school, we were the first full-time students in Yenakpaja, he made a statement, one day came to class, he looked at us and he said, no man becomes a great pastor moving from Shomolu to Bariga. You can't be moving from Shomolu to Bariga if you want to be a great pastor. See ya! As this man is talking to me. <laughs> I, as a young man, before I became born again, I just love to drive from Victoria Island to Ikeja. From Ikeja, I drive back again. And I enjoy it. And I hear the man telling me, that is not the way to become a pastor. Sit down at your assignment, otherwise you look like a man in an asylum. I quote him verbatim. I said, okay. Oh. <laughs> if this is it, then no more. Believe you me, nothing takes me out in the city where I am. If you see me outside and I'm going to preach or I'm going to the airport to travel, you can't find me anywhere. You want to be great? You want to exercise dominion? Focus on your assignment. There are too many yet and there are people. That's second from 1 Kings 20, 39, 40. Many people fail not because of the devil, but broken focus. Hear this and hear me well. Focus people don't do good things. They do the right things. A wise man says, and I quote him, he said, I go at what I do as if there were nothing else in the world to do, unquote. Keep your face on the sunshine 
and you will not see the shadows. It is broken focus that make destiny broken. Obstacles are seen by people when they take their eyes off their goals. A focused man does not see obstacles. And if a man is running and he says, On your max, get set, go. Our father gave me a Somebody start abusing him. Look at your head. Look at your head. He said, The man will not stop to answer him. That distraction. When he hit the tape as first, everyone will clap for him. Focus people don't allow side talks to distract them. Distractions don't move focus people. And also, hear this. Most times, people are very famous. Don't allow also your fame to become your distraction. When the famous has distraction, end the distraction. That will not be a question. It's not enough to be busy. Many of us are really busy, but we are not effective. The question is, what are you busy about? Staying focused on any given task is a major key to outstanding accomplishment. Now, Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16, if you look at Paul's life, he's one man that was focused. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. This is what I'm here for. And this is all I want to do. In the same Paul made a statement in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. He said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. If you read past life, everything said, This is what I'm here for. I am focused, I'm here for an assignment. Now, let me say this to you practically that it will touch you. If you are not focused, nobody will know you. Don't tell how powerful focus is. When we say Paul, without saying anything, does any distract your mind? That's how you know your mind is focused. When we say Paul in the Bible, some distract your mind. I want to ask you a question. Distract your mind. When they say Paul, as a preacher. When they sit in the Bible, does any distract your mind? Now, let me come down. When they say Ronaldo, do they distract your mind? The, yes, football. True? When they say David Oedekbo, do they distract your mind? Listen, hold it. Without mentioning anything, do they distract your mind? When they call your name, what strikes people's mind? Focus people are identified with something. They exercise dominion in a particular area of endeavor. And hear me and hear me well. To be focused, I'll tell you certain things that will make you drive you that you can never be distracted. Number one is if you want to be focused, look at your future. Look at your worth. A focused man does not look at the present. He looks at where he is going. Philippians chapter 3. If you read verse 14, Paul said, I press towards the mark for the price of the high corner of God in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing. There's a target I have. Paul focused on his future. He said, I'm pressing because this is my target. Nothing can move me. I do not want any to distract me. I press. I have a target. I'm looking at my future. A man, when he says, on your marks, he does not look at the starting point, he looks at the finishing point. A wise man said, our focus is our future. And what we focus on will multiply in our lives. Number two is avoid distractions. Avoid what? Now, I define distractions in a very funny way and then listen to carefully to him. What are distractions? Distractions are side attractions. Seeking your attention 
in order to stop you from reaching your destination. Disrupt the side world, actions, see your attention in order to stop you from reaching your destination. They look good, but they will not allow you to reach your destination. Number three, watch what you hear, see, and meditate. If you want to be focused, watch what you hear, see, and meditate. Nobody can fully protect you. You are the gatekeeper of your life. As a focused man, you must watch what you see. Not every, no focus, but don't see everything. Even television, not everything you watch. Not everything you hear, not everywhere you go to sit down to hear things. Even the gospel, there are people you should not hear from. That they say they are preaching does not mean that you preach. A focused man does not listen to everybody. If you come from this family, we don't talk about the devil, we talk about God. You never hear Satan, Satan, Satan is heavily, he did, we commonize him in this family. But if you are not focused, before you know it, you will be talking devil, 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 devil your life. So watch what you see, watch what you hear, and watch what you meditate on. Jesus said in Mark chapter 4, verse 24, he said, And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. Be careful what you hear. Now, I'll tell you, speak an example, a businessman now, we hear in a place, he said, well, he can't do business without borrowing. But here, I've said, borrowing is not a sin, but it's a weight. You can do business without borrowing. Now, if you keep hearing that, before you know it, all your life, you live by borrowing. And by the time you borrow every day, to come out. <laughs> you know, when, when, when bank managers want to give you loan, they laugh. When you don't pay, they frown. <laughs> they say, my friend, you want to affect my job? Better pay your loan. You'll come out of that debt in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, keep the right people around you. To be focused, keep the right people around you. Permit only relationships that will increase your focus on your assignment. Wrong people destroy focus. Is the eye on sharpened? Proverbs 1, 7, verse 17. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. He that walketh with the wise, a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Now hear this. When wrong people live your life, wrong things stop happening. Every wrong thing happens around you, there's a wrong person around you. In life, if you want to be focused, spend less time with those who need you. Spend more time with those you need. Let me explain what I mean. <laughs> I've been coming to Shiloh from 1999. I've never missed any Shiloh. Now, hear this and hear me well. The first shoot I ever attended, my wife and I trekked from here to Sango Junction. Or to, what do you call it? The bus stop. There was no bus, 1999. We never had seat. I still remember that was where we sat. No space. Everyone was full, so we just managed there. But I was focused. I didn't come to preach. I have never thought in my life I will ever preach. Even now, I didn't plan out to, to preach. I came to be blessed. Even if they didn't introduce me, I was still able to be blessed. <laughs> but my focus is I came because there's something I draw from here to add to my life. Focus people don't go to where Jesus stayed with his father more than the people. Because he was focused, so he spent more time with the father. When he comes, he spent 10% of his time with the people and go back again. But this time is the reverse. You're a businessman, you don't spend more time in your business knowledge, you spend more time with people who are coming to visit you, tell you about burial. You will soon go off business. <laughs> hear this and hear me well. 
one cannot be totally sold out to the curse of Christ and not supernaturally stand at the end. Peter asked Jesus a question. He said, Master, we have left all <laughs> and followed you. In Mark 10, 28 to 30. Jesus looked at him and said, No man that will leave his house, <laughs> leave father, leave sisters, and that I will not reward, not only here. This, uh, uh, you've left everything to follow me. You are focused on me. I want to tell you something. You can't regret being focused on me. He said, No man that leaves everything and follows me that will not inherit right here and also eternal life. He said, Your dominion will be here and also in heaven. You have a place. Jesus said to Peter and the rest. Paul speaking in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 7 to 8. Paul made a very deep statement. He said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He said, henceforth there laid up for me a crown of righteousness. With the Lord that righteous joy shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that loved is appearing. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> when you are focused, Paul is saying you will see far whether you like it or not. Heaven is real. From discipline, they said you won't live your life anyhow. Focus people know that at the end they must make heaven. Thank God for all the breakthroughs. But if you don't make heaven, that's the worst thing that can happen to a Christian. When you are focused, you live your life with that understanding that at the end of your chapter you must not miss him so you will live carelessly you will live what you the discipline we had you will not tell us won't i be disciplined will i live anyhow to live anyhow is to go nowhere but let me say these few things before i round off if I really want to be focused and I want to stand out supernaturally at the end of my chapter, at the end of my life, just like Paul said, I finish my course, then number one, I must not allow wrong ambition mixed with my vision. One of the greatest, Satan's greatest instrument for combating great destinies, he allows wrong ambition mixed with your vision. You know, Peter... In John chapter 21, 15 to 17, went back to fishing. Went back to what? He went back to fishing. That was what he liked. Jesus said, lovers thou me, go back to what I asked you to do. Peter lost focus when he went back to fishing. Paul, who was focused, lost focus leaving the Gentiles for the Jews. Ambition is what you want. Vision is what God wants. Most great people start to experience a nosediving effect when they try to mix unhealthy ambition and competition with vision. Jesus, it happened to him. They came to him in John chapter 6 and said they want to make him king. He ran away. He didn't say he ran. Many destinies are arrested because of wrong interest. Watch your interest. So it will not affect your vision. Yeah, I know you like politics. Are, are you really, if you're a pastor, full-time, that's what I mean. I don't mean a politician. You now want to play politic pastor. They won't know you for anything. Because in politics, they won't know you. A pastor, they won't know. Full-time, I don't mean part-time. Because part-time is different from full-time. Amen? And then watch the company, if you want the wrong company. Not everybody at the bus stop is traveling. There are people at the airport who are going nowhere. They tell you, this is Eric. This is Lufthansa. They've never entered anyone. If you stand with such a person, you miss your flight. So a focused person should know, I don't go anywhere. I don't need to see my father every day. I know how to reach him. Don't bother about that. I have, you don't have to see somebody. I don't call him. I listen to him every day. If you want to be focused, watch the company you keep before good things will accompany you. 
You don't have to see somebody to hear from the person. Don't I have his books and tapes? Everything he wants to say is written in a book or in a tape, so if I listen to it. <laughs> Number three. Why many? Ignorance of the content of your assignment. Ignorance of the content of your assignment. Inside every assignment, there's a consignment. Your provision is in the vision God has given to you because your prosperity is in your assignment. Our father is prospering because he's doing what God called him to do. True? Ronaldo is prospering because he's doing what God called him to do. There's no way we can go and play football. Nobody will even take us. They pay him in millions. That's what he's doing. Our father is doing what he's doing. When you settle at your assignment, inside there the provision comes. Focus people settle with the assignment. Sit down and face your assignment. But let me close on this note that will touch you. If all the things you have heard from day one till today and you are not focused in order to get the messages, in order to get the books, in order to get the tapes, because you have to hear and hear and hear before you think you understand. A man who does not read books, listen to tapes, has no advantage over the man who cannot read them. Focus people, when they come for meetings like this, they say, what material will I get that I will go back to improve my life? If after all these things, you shout, yeah, I was in Shiloh. You have been coming to Shiloh. If no changes, then better change your lifestyle. Take personal responsibility. Focus is a major qualifier for dominion. It is focus that makes the real difference in your life. You know why the world has moved from the conventional to dynamism? Knowledge, you must seek it if you are focused. The first world was agriculture, second world industrialization, now we are in technology and knowledge. Even to the businessman who is focused, go for knowledge. You, go for knowledge. Get the material. Sit down after Shiloh. Focus at this Shiloh, there must be difference. I didn't come here for form. And I tell you, at the end of the day, it will be evident that you're a man set aside for dominion. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. You pray one prayer. Lord, help me to maintain focus on my assignment per time. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Help me to remain focused. Help me to be focused. Lift up your hand and pray that prayer. Help me to be focused. Help me, Lord, to remain focused. Help me to be focused.